Back in my own lab slash office space, let's have a look at room E211, which we could use that door. Or we can just go in here to the main door, my area, and basically it splits off into the main service area right there where I have my computer and my desk and all that and workbench. And then there's a self-service section, and I'll do another video on that. But right now, there is E211 right here. This is the storage room. So a lot of stuff in here gets used very seldomly once in a while but um, let's have a look at what we got starting here on the left whole bunch of tektronics digital scopes the um, the tds 3012b they've pretty much been replaced by the mdo 2012 but they still get used once in a while especially for senior projects i'll give these to the students to use for their senior project because i need all the MDL 2012s for use for regular lab experiments. Got some old computer junk down there. Um, current probe amplifiers along with the current probes themselves in here. And more current probe amplifiers and power supplies. And um, oh yeah, also the current probes for these are actually stored very conveniently inside this little case insert into this little mini mainframe unit. There's one for the current amplifier and one for storage for the probe itself. Then this shelf right below it, that's a whole bunch of equipment that needs to be repaired. And then there's some old Tektronics, or um, these are HP. These are HP 1200A oscilloscopes. The reason we still have these is because they've got differential inputs. So once in a great while they come in handy but you can see a few of them need some service. On these next three racks over here, there's power supplies all over the place. These plus minus 15 volt or plus minus 12 volt or even just flat out five volt power supplies. Got some really ugly old variable power supplies, some exposed plus minus 15 volt power supplies, just, you know, not inside any special box, just right there on the steel frame and uh, more power supplies and more power supplies some interesting one i have here is 5 volt 27 amp regulated dc power supply i've never actually used it but i think just the fact that it puts out such a ridiculous amount of current at 5 volts regulated i think that's worth keeping so we got some more power supplies some computer UPS's here, more UPS's, and some old scanners. The only reason I have all these scanners here is because I want to take out the the tubes, the cold cathode fluorescent tubes out of them and use them for some miscellaneous projects that I have in mind. And uh, books, lots of books. I have these all set aside. I've been accumulating all these books from various uh, faculty who don't need them anymore over the past couple years you know once in a while they go through their bookshelves or change offices and they get rid of some books and so I've been accumulating these to uh, make like a little engineering book library in the new building the new engineering building that's going up that's already up and we'll be moving there soon all this stuff going over there more power supplies these are the big beefy power supplies I have down here where what is this HP 6282A, uh, 10 volt, 10 amp. Awesome stuff. Down here, just some, some more awesome stuff. Got some old vacuum tube. Klystron power supplies, I think. What is this? HP 715A power supply. So there's beam volts and reflector volts and all that cool stuff. And the only reason I have these things is just because they're they're a high voltage power supply putting out, you know, 400, 800. Looks like this one goes up to 900 volts on that thing. Yep, there's the range switch. Got a little dinky scope here to fix. And another something that somebody was getting rid of a few years ago. Frequency cycles per second beat frequency oscillator. And this one... There's certainly all tubes in there. 
can see some of them tubes in there and even on the front panel there's a probably a 6e5 magic eye indicator tube and some awesome old school headphone slash microphone things to go along with it maybe the amateur radio club could do something with this maybe restore it or actually use it for something i don't know speaking of vacuum tubes we also have four of these this uh, Tektronix 575 curve tracer so you stick a transistor in there or a diode of course and you can make the diode IV curve or the multiple transistor IV curves there on the the CRT display lots of fun little knobs and switches and I took the panels off of this one to see the inside and then you can see all the tubes in there top and bottom all the way around look at that it's even got some little ne2 neon lamps probably there for relaxation oscillators little oscillator circuits for different functions it's not all tubes though you can see there are some transistors mounted on the other side of this aluminum plate there they are right there there's another transistor right there on that aluminum standoff. Nice big power resistors here. I guess inside this, that's the, the high voltage power supply with some more resistors for... Uh, let me shine a little light in here and you can see some more. What is that? Oh! I thought that was big wire wound resistors. It's actually... A selenium rectifier inside there awesome or is it selenium oh no it's not selenium no I can see the individual diodes where I'm pointing the light right there that's a diode that's screwed into an aluminum plate and there's a hole right there for the other diode pin to stick through and go somewhere else and so there's three diodes there that you can see on this side apparently the diodes in here are germanium rectifiers and this box is not high voltage power supply for the CRT it's the collector sweep power supply now this is badass look at this look at how you control the the bias voltage or the the peak volt range that you apply to the device under test they use a very hack in, in here that's awesome and the fan in here is real killer look at the motor on that on this fan keep things cool inside here looks like I'm gonna have to fix this little thing holding it on here with the, the rubber it's really falling apart the high voltage supply for the CRT if we can start here on the, the anode connector and then I've traced it back it actually goes down below the chassis and then down here somewhere and you can see there's a big old transformer down there for all the the power requirements for this thing and then there's the bottom part of the transistor socket protrusion out the bottom here so that's just a quick tour of the inside of this transistor curve tracer we have that one plus that one and then these two other here four of them and they only get used on one day for one particular course out of the entire year that's why we don't bother to get any fancy new curve tracers because we really don't need them. We just keep using these things once a year over and over again and they serve their purpose quite well. A couple more things on these racks here. We got some old RF stuff, some uh, stereo or mono audio amplifiers right here, three of them there and there's another one 100 watt audio amp down here and um, that's more power supply stuff this one apparently has some problems right here is a couple of HP 3561A dynamic signal analyzers and for the longest time ever since I started here in 2005 and until quite recently nobody ever used them until finally for somebody's senior project they needed to use one of these things so sure I said I got a dynamic signal analyzer for you here you go and old computer CRT a couple of old televisions down there 
over here on these carts. Got another black and white CRT monitor. Once in a while, I might just hook it up to this black and white camera and point the camera at the CRT and get that weird little infinite uh, image effect going back and forth, the, the video feedback thing. Got a three-phase Variac that one of the alumni gave to me years ago and it's been sitting here. It is in certainly need of some care and I was just talking to one of the students here who does some restoration work on the side and so he he agreed to help me restore this thing to make it all nice and pretty. Got some old parts drawers that somebody was getting rid of and some more really good quality polystyrene parts drawers here. Whenever I see these things I always snatch them up because you can't buy these polystyrene drawers anymore. If you buy anything like this nowadays it's always polypropylene shitty ass plastic. Now the same guy who gave me the three phase Variac here also gave me this vacuum pump which I have not yet turned on because I want to get it cleaned up and taken apart and make sure everything is mechanically sound with it and then I can have a nice vacuum pump and then this book here is a bunch of data books. Now when I first started working here there was a shit ton of data books and I got rid of all of them except the power semiconductor data books because I do have quite a few power semiconductors and some of them are so obscure that there's no information online so eventually I want to go through these books and try to find some information on them. On this card here is a bunch of junk that I accumulated from a copy machine that I took apart in 2006. The Kodak 2110 duplicator or whatever it was called copy machine. Got a motor here with uh, a rubber belt and more rubber belts and more motors and solenoids and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. But unfortunately I really haven't done anything with any of this stuff. I just have so many ideas and so many projects that I work on that a lot of it just falls to the wayside. Like for example, the thing that I have in this Lutron box is an 8 inch floppy disk drive and some 8 inch floppy disks. And so I want to get that hooked up to a computer, an old computer, and see if I can read the data on the floppy disk and get something working with it. But I've been wanting to do that since 2001, ever since I first got the floppy disk drive. Just a bunch of old computer stuff on here. I think in one of these shoe boxes where I keep all my hard disks that I save from any kind of hard drive I take apart, I always keep the hard disks. And right here, a few things I brought up from the, the basement storage lab is some old transformers. You can see this one has caps to go on vacuum tube anodes. So this one would probably have been a uh, you know high power, high voltage power supply going to a couple of tubes for full wave rectification and this other big ass transformer got a picture of it here I found on a surplus website and um, not only does it go for a pretty penny but I was more interested in the specs plus minus 3500 volts at 300 milliamps awesome stuff and then there's another pole pig transformer down here and a really big old really heavy inductor only two wires going to it it's a general electric reactor there we go if you can read it maybe i don't know 12 amps and voltage is not labeled and there's some more old computer stuff you can see i got those reels of old computer data tape down there on the bottom of that other cart. More transformers, a lot of vacuum tube power supply transformers with low voltage 6.3 volt coils inside plus another 300 volt coil or something like that. Very typical of all these little things down here and maybe one or two of these as well and a lot of other transformers up here. Even got some microwave oven transformers that I've 
salvaged myself. There's these wooden cedar drawers with just a bunch of random stuff in there. And finally, the coolest thing in here, or I think one of the coolest, is this big ass power supply. Apparently given to us by IBM Technical Gift Program years ago. And it's a Sorensen Nobatron DCR20-125A. That's 20 volts regulated and 125 amps maximum current capacity output. Really awesome stuff. It actually has a three phase plug, although it only uses two of the phases. It needs, it needs a three phase plug to work. And understandably, it's really heavy. It's mounted on this really tough industrial cart here. And there's the, the output. A couple of things right here for the high current output. So that's about all there is in here. Just a bunch of stuff, like I said, gets used once in a while or sometimes not at all. Like these things, tape recorders here, blast from the past. It used to get used a um, long time ago for some really ancient computers. I think AIM-65 computers that they had here. But, and actually I've gotten rid of quite a few of these things. We used to have many more, but I held on to three of them. Have no idea why. I just can't find myself to throw out some of this stuff sometimes. In the new building, I will not be having this equivalent storage space, although I will have um, a much larger service area, my main service area with workbench and everything. So I will have a place for all these things. It just won't be in a dedicated storage room like this. So thanks for watching. See you later, and next time we'll have a look at this room here once I get all these spools of wire put away. It's really cluttered now. Usually it's not this messy. See you later.